All right, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is about an unboxing and just a quick review of a product here. And this is going to relate to something I've been saying to a lot of my friends when they ask me about, you know, EVs becoming more popular and charging stations popping up all over the place. What's going to happen with gas stations in the future? Well, I personally don't think gas stations are going anywhere for a while, but with the rise of EVs, that is taken away from their business. So I've always said it would be so smart if a gas or an oil company would start putting charging stations at their gas stations, have a section of gas stalls and then a section of EV stalls. That way they could, you know, capitalize on both markets. And with that being said, I've got a package here that is EV related, but sent to me from a company that you've seen before with oil and gas. So let's see what all we've got here. So we've got another mobile charging cable. This time it's from Shell. And this is a first time unboxing. I don't know really anything about this other than it's a mobile charger. So let's see. All right. Actually, this is really nice as far as cases goes. It's not hard, hard, but it is like a soft plastic and it does zip up. It's got some hangers here that you could hang it on your wall if you needed to put it away. Let's see what's inside. So you've got a zipper here where you can keep your manual and other little bits and bobs. So this does pack away quite nicely. Let's see. All right, so there are some straps here that hold these pieces down. Here's your NEMA. Uh, 1450. Here's a couple talking points here. Uh, just so you know, this was sent to me by EV Goer. Uh, right here. EV Goer reached out to me. They've partnered up with Shell. I don't know to what extent if they just license the name just for their badging, but uh, they somehow have partnered with Shell. And you'll see it's got a NEMA 1450 connector. The end of it is a J1772. Um, a lot of the usuals. Okay, so first things to note. Yes, this is a J1772 end. It does have a dust cap here. I like when they do include a cap and it's tethered to the device itself. So if you push the button, that does release up here. So there's your connector right there. There we go. Other end. These are your, your bricks here. It's got uh, the light ready, means it's green. If it's got an error, it turns red. Hold for two seconds to set the current, the timer, stop charging. There's some user instructions here. It is a NEMA 1450. This is a cap to protect that. So this is a NEMA 1450. You'll need an outlet for that. So thanks again to EV Goer for sending this out to me for review. One of the things that I had to tell them though is I do not have a NEMA 1450 outlet in my garage. I have my charger hardwired into the wall. 
So this is my Tesla wall charger. I've got this hardwired into an electrical outlet in the back um, that is 48 amp, 240 volts. So this is gonna be the fastest thing you can use to charge inside your house. And this one is 40 amps. So it is slightly slower than a wall charger from Tesla but a lot of people don't want to spend the extra money on one of these guys and it's just easier if you have a nema 1450 outlet um, in your garage it's just easier to connect one of these because you don't need to hire an electrician you just plug it in so i reached out to ev goer and asked them about this nema 1450 because i'm not going to be able to test this in my garage uh, with just this. So they sent me an adapter and let's take a look at that. This is a level two to level one adapter that basically converts your NEMA 1450 to your NEMA 515. So you can plug this into your 110 outlet. All right, this is an unboxing for the first time of this product. So is all there is to it so it comes with its own little sock to protect this end all right so as you can see this is color coordinated to match it comes from the same company let's see here so you will actually flip it upside down so your ground or your neutral there is like this and now we can attach this to a 110 outlet and test the charger that way. All right, so now I can just plug this in like that. And this is the graphic that shows up when you plug it in. Um, with your natural eye, it doesn't flicker like that. That's just the refresh rate of my camera that's making it look like that. But this is basically what it's telling you is the temperature and that it's ready and how many volts it's pulling. So let's go ahead and plug this into the car itself and we'll see what this says after that. Also, remember to keep in mind, I am slowing down the charging significantly by using this adapter, but it's my only way of testing this out because I don't have a NEMA 1450 in my garage. I can only plug it into a 110 outlet, which is gonna make it level one charging. So super slow connection but it will work. So let's go take a look at that. Remember, if you're gonna be using this on a Tesla, you're going to need to use your adapter. It greened up immediately. So let's go take a look in the car and see what it says there. And then we'll look on the, uh, the brick for the charger itself. All right, so my battery was already at 90% when I got in the car. So I just went ahead and extended that to 100%, which I don't normally do unless I'm taking a road trip. But I usually go as far as 90% just on a daily basis. And uh, since this is going on a level one type of speed, it's only putting out two kilowatts per hour at 15 amps, 113 volts. So that means to get from 90 to 100% it's gonna take four hours. So let's go take a look at the charging cable itself and see what it says on that end. And you'll see that it is flashing green, meaning that it is charging. And it's basically saying the same thing here, 15 amps, 13 amps. It's kind of, it's kind of bouncing around there at 1.8 kilowatts, 114 volts. So, this is all good stuff here. Again, it's only charging this slow because I'm using an adapter to step it down from a level two to a level one. But if you've got that NEMA 1450 in your garage, this thing will be lightning fast. All right, so let's play a little simulation here just to see how fast 40 amps will get you. I'm gonna stop charging here and unlock the charge port so I can remove this one. So it's unlocked, it just comes right out like that. 
Now let's take this guy here. Keep in mind, this is a 48 amp uh, and 240 volts. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've got the Tesla connector in. Let's go take a look at this. All right, so this one, I'm letting it ramp up here. Okay, so with the Tesla wall charger connected, I'm getting 11 kilowatts, 48 amps, 232 volts, and that dropped it down to an hour to charge instead of four and like four and a half hours. But as you can see, that's with it pulling 48 amps. So let's go ahead and change that to see the difference. So 48 amps is gonna take an hour and 10 minutes. Let's go down to 40 amps. So 40 amps. So it added five minutes. So you see there's not much of a difference between a 48 amp wall charger and a 40 amp charger that's more of a mobile style level two charger it's a five minute difference. So that little exercise in the car of stepping it down to 40 amps instead of 48 amps is going to duplicate the experience of plugging into a NEMA 1450 in my garage if I had one. It'll output the 40 amps and that's the speeds you would have seen. So I've reviewed a lot of mobile chargers on this channel before and they all pretty much do the same thing. Uh, the only difference is, is maybe the quality and the materials, and I can vouch for the quality of the materials here. The rubber is very flexible, it's not too stiff, it doesn't look like it's going to crack at any time. Uh, it feels solid, it doesn't feel cheap in my hands. Um, so I think this is going to be a good option for a lot of you guys. It's not for everyone, but there are a lot of benefits to having mobile chargers. I've got a couple of them. I keep a mobile charger in the sub trunk of my car at all times just for emergency reasons and I have another one here in the garage in case for whatever reason my Tesla wall charger stops working I can just plug into a 110 outlet and do a trickle charge that way uh, level one style and if you are going to get any of these mobile chargers make sure you have the adapters that you need uh, EV goer does sell this one on their website uh, they also have other chargers that come with adapters. Just take a look at their website, see what fits your needs. Trust me, if you're going on a road trip, if you're going camping to these campsites that have different electrical outlets, you never know what type of outlet they're going to have there. So it's always good to have options. So adapters are a good thing. I really do like this case a lot. It's very well made. It says the logo here, Shell Recharge and uh, I like the color too. I think it's kind of cool. It's a lot different than the usual black or white that you see out there. So this really stands out to me as a good product. Go on their website, take a look for yourself, see what you think. So this is going to work with any EV, no matter what brand you have. They all have some sort of J1772 connector to them, unless you have a Tesla. I use this adapter that I got from Lectron and it seems to work great connecting a uh, J1772 to a Tesla NAX, uh, North American Charging Standard. So if you don't have one, uh, you can get one from Lectron. Uh, most Teslas come with one already from the factory. That's just something they give you, an adapter. So maybe you bought your car used and the adapter is missing. Lectron has you covered for that one. Go ahead and check out EV Goer, the Shell Recharge. So that's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot more coming, and I'll see you guys in the near future. Take care. Bye-bye.